What's up, nation? Um, happy Friday to you. I am still on hiatus, sabbatical, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but this is just on my mind, and I just got to uh, speak on it real quick. So I figured I might as well do a video about it and post it. Um, I will be back soon with regular live content. But anyway, so, you know. Good sis Andrew Caldwell went live yesterday as he normally does and you know he went live from Starbucks as he normally does and drinking refresher acais and stuff in his face with whatever they would allow him to purchase as he normally does. Uh, so yesterday was supposed to start off as peaceful um, you know questions and answers because he's an open book and as normal took a sharp turn left of course you know he started going off on all the poor people and the black women and things of that nature and one thing he kept harping on was not working a nine to five at mcdonald's i don't know what he believes but a good deal of his supporters and followers are people who work nine to fives there is nothing wrong with a nine to five as long as you are making an honest living, there is nothing wrong with that. For someone who claims to have come from such a, uh, you know, a, a raggedy beginning and, you know, he was homeless and, you know, sleeping in Starbucks and washing up in the sink and living out of his Jaguar, you really turn your fat platypus nose up at people who work an hourly job. Now, we all know that you don't work. Call it what you want. Going live and just saying whatever is on the top of your balding head and talking out the side of your many, many necks is not work. When you work, you actually work. You have a goal. You press toward completing that goal. Uh, you have things you need to accomplish. You have tasks set before you. You have items that you need to check off. You literally get on and just open your everlasting Godstopper and then just go. That, my dear, is not work. Sitting at Starbucks, preening and posing and drinking 50,000 calories in one drink is not work taking selfies is not work so how dare you decide that you want to degrade and look down on someone who again is putting forth an effort who gets up every day on as you say a daily base clocks in serves customers talks to customers assists customers you know they they in their own small way make the world a better place which is the opposite of what you do whenever you get on live. Again, if you took the time to really think about it, then of course that would uh, entail you having a brain, having a functioning brain and knowing how to work and have it coordinate between you know what comes out and what formulates here. And I know that's really above your station in life, so I'm just gonna digress. But if you really put two and two together, you would realize that I'm gonna say a good, 85% of the people who follow you and actually support you are the same people that you are degrading by turning your nose up at a McDonald's job working nine to five. And if you really had a PR team, and if you had a, a real team of managers and people that work behind the scenes to keep you together, which obviously they're failing at, but if you really did have this team, they would warn you about going on live and saying such hateful incendiary things because it would not be good for your brand. It would not be good for your character, your persona, whatever you want to call it, the two-facedness that is Andrew Caldwell. It would not be good for you to get online and just talk about people but that you always talk about the homosexuals even though it is very questionable whether you belong in that group or not i'm not going to say yes or no but it is very questionable and while we're on that you talk about god delivered you eight years ago but yet he's still working on your mannerisms 
if God created the world in six days and on the seventh day he rested, I do not think that it would take almost eight years to turn around some mannerisms within you unless you were holding on to them. Now, it's a difference between God, take this away from me. I don't want it. I don't need it. I'm, I'm giving it to you freely that he can work with. But I think in your case, you're comfortable in who you are. You're comfortable in your mannerisms. You're comfortable in the way you speak, the way you flail your hands, the way you dress, the way you pose, the way you do this and all that. You're very comfortable. So it's hard. Well, no, it's not hard because nothing with God is impossible or hard. But he's not going to take something away from you that you are steadily holding on to. So, Angela Trisha Caldwell, I believe if you really wanted to get rid of those mannerisms and you were honest and open with God, our Father and Savior, he would actually take those away from you. But you're not. You're holding on to them tight because that's what you're known for. And, and that's where you find your sweet spot. <laughs> sweet spot. That's where you're comfortable with. So, you're not, you're not trying to give them up. You talk about women. Again, your mannerisms. Very womanly. Very feminine. If you were actually attractive and had bigger breasts, guys might actually hit on you and think you were a woman. Everything that you put out there and you project on people are things that you either covet in them or that you despise in yourself. So I think you despise homosexuals because you see that within yourself and you don't like it, but you don't want to get rid of it. You don't know how to get rid of it because it's been a part of you for so long that it's who you are and you're still holding on to that thing i think you dislike women because you want to be a woman or you want to be comfortable with being with a man lusting ogling uh, holding hands kissing whatever i think that's why you hate black women no i'm sorry that's why you hate women in general you hate black women probably because you have such a dysfunctional relationship with your mother or again because you could be very envious of what they're able to do that you can't you're envious that they can wear makeup freely and it's no issue. You're envious that they can wear wigs and it's no issue. You're envious that they can freely and openly date men and interact with them and you choose not to. I, am, I, am I hitting some buttons here? Is, is the bell ringing? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know when I, when I start lying because I don't want to lie unlike you. You know, the Bible says, out of your mouth the heart speaks. And all we hear you talk about is things, possessions, material goods, your Maserati, your furs, your ring, your luxury items in your apartment, your blue check mark, the money in your account. And that's what you equate blessings with, or being blessed. Yes, it is a blessing to have those comforts where you don't have to worry about how you're going to get back and forth to work you don't have to worry about how you're going to pay your bills all of that is very good and 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 god wants you to have those things but that is not all that a blessing entails where is the blessing of health where is the blessing of life where is the blessing of mobility where is the blessing of friends where is the blessing of family where is the blessing of sound mind where is the blessing of good judgment is it that you don't know that those things are blessings or is it that you don't have those things as blessings? Because you say you have many, 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 many friends, but we never see you out with any of them. We don't even hear you out with them. They don't have to be on camera. They could just be, you know, uh, in front of you, on the side of you, and we can hear them talking, but you're always alone. And on the rare occasion when you're out with somebody, it's usually Tara, and how often do we really see her? We rarely see you with your mother, and then when we do, you're usually abusing her, uh, talking down to her, treating her like a puppy, something of that nature. We never see you with your family. You posted a picture last Christmas, last Thanksgiving, of you and your family, but they were in the back, and they were actually having fun and interacting with each other, and you were way in the forefront taking this picture like you were uh, disassociating from them. like. That's them over there. Here's me over here. Don't get us confused. Don't get us twisted like we're together. I'm here and I'm just doing this, you know, so I can show you that I do be around people. None of us were fooled. 
So maybe that's why you equate blessings with uh, monetary things and material gifts because you don't, you've never had the other blessings to realize that they are actually blessings. Hmm. You always say you're an open book, but when people try to actually ask you for real, for real questions, outside of the shallow and superficial, you clam up, you ignore them, you catch an attitude, you block them. So are you really an open book when you are only willing to release the first three chapters and the other 24 chapters are locked up and you won't allow anybody to read them? How open of a book are you? Or are we just allowed to get a, a preview, a prologue, if you will? And it's funny that you say that, you know, you are, that your true supporters, you know, they, they check you on, on your bull and they call you out and you learn so much from them. And then when people tell you that you're wrong, you know, it's fine because, you know, you're growing on a regular uh, basis. But when someone points out when you're wrong, when you've actually done wrong, it's a problem. You blocked one of my troll accounts yesterday because during your live and people were asking you questions you said i'm going to answer questions and of course you uh, segued over to dares because that that is your your man crush every day that's someone who rejected your advances um someone you wanted them to baste your turkey and butter your roll and they refused you so now they're public enemy number one because they're all they're also <laughs> in the homosexual lifestyle but yet they're comfortable with it and they're making money and they're making good money now whether they're scamming or not that's not for me to say because as you say who are me to judge but you're so envious and covetous of what he has and you're so desperate to hold on to your 15 fleeting minutes of fame because baby girl let me tell you your seconds are running out that click that clock that tick that talk is winding down and you know it and we know it so you are grasping at straws or grasping at penises whatever you want to call them trying to hold on to some semblance and relevancy of fame so now Darius is your target du jour so of course you find every which way to segue back to him and you're talking about how he's scamming black women and you're standing up for the very same black women that you hate but you're standing up for them so you can insert yourself in his business and try to get a narrative going. So again, you segue to him and you're talking and yipping and yammering and all that good stuff. And then you mention how he was such a bad person for doxing his customers. Does that sound familiar? You're probably going to say no, but it sounds familiar to everybody who's, who's cognizant of you. And me, under my troll account, I mentioned... <laughs> You're so against doxing, but you decided to dox delivering doozies. Why did you do that? You looked at that and, you know, and it throws that, that blank look of confusion on your face and you blocked me. Why would you block me when I'm doing nothing but presenting truth to you? Not something that's made up, not something uh, fictitious, something that's factual, something that you did. You did that on your Instagram live unless there's someone else with that creative face and that broad nose, this six head, receding hairline, five chins, 15 necks, and a stomach that just won't quit. Unless there's someone else out there that's pretending to be you with your exact Instagram handle and your exact feminist ways and affectations, baby, didn't you do that? You did that. It's, 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 <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's in my phone. It's on multiple people's phones. So why would you get mad at someone brought up your truth because you don't know how to live in your truth is that it again stop me when I'm lying I need you to get it together and I know you're going to see this because you have your, your trolls hey twat brown I'm sorry twat black I'm glad that you came up off your pedestal you know scaring children and elderly to come down to view the page or whoever's over here uh Love 71786, August 1986, uh, Pastor Renee Jackson. I don't know who's over here watching, but you're watching. Hi, hello, welcome to the nation. You need to get your boy and set him gay, because there's no straight with him. Set him gay, let him know that people are only tolerating him because 
he provides momentary um, snatches away from reality because he's so, so ignorant, so blind, so that he thinks that people are laughing with him. No, they are guffawing at him and he's so desperate to get a little fame, a little notoriety. And he's so desperate for the attention that he clearly did not get from his mother, his non-existent father, or his family when he was younger. He's still starved for affection and attention. So he is willing to do any and everything, say whatever he needs to say to get that. He is the equivalent of a young girl who is out here prostituting or just jumping from bed to bed because she is lacking the approval and love of a father. This is the same situation. He is lacking affirmation, attention, affection, and, and praise. So he is willing to literally sell his soul. He is willing to be a clown, a buffoon, and a court jester in order to get what he has been craving all of his pathetic little life. And if I liked you a little bit, and if you weren't such a public menace and nuisance, I may feel sorry for you, but I don't. I don't because you have been causing chaos for the last eight years. I don't feel sorry for you because I have been a I know I'm not a victim because if I to be a victim would mean that you hurt me and that I'm cowering in the corner. No, I was a I was a stepping stone for you to get to wherever you're trying to go. Um, I happened to be a roadblock in your way and you tried to kick me and you shifted me a little bit, but you didn't move me out your way because if you move me out your way. I would not be here right now. My channel would not be flourishing and thriving. My subscribers, which I call my family, they would not be growing along with me. So you didn't move me. You just shifted me a little bit, enough to get around me. But you didn't. You didn't move me. So no, I'm not a victim of what you did. Like I said, just so just a, I'm a stumbling block for you. And everybody that's out here on YouTube telling the truth is a stumbling block for you. And because you're so short and slew-footed and knock-kneed and pigeon-toed, you don't know how to step over those roadblocks. So you're trying to kick them and you're breaking your toes at every kick. And I know it's painful. And I, I, I know it's painful and I know it hurts, but a hard head makes a soft behind. So maybe when you break all of your hooves, your little paws, and you realize that what you're doing is futile, maybe you'll come to your senses. But I'm not gonna hold my breath. Just like you can't hold your stomach. I just wanted to get that out there. I'm gonna go on with the rest of my day in real life. Once I clock out from my nine to five job, I'm sorry, nine to six, because I get an hour lunch. As soon as I clock out from my nine to six job, I'm gonna go out to dinner, I'm gonna relax. And I'm going to do something that you will never be able to do. Be at peace. Love, peace, and do peace. Oh, and let me just say, <laughs> this has been a sticker in my craw. No one that is a celebrity or well-known or a public figure has to justify their status by saying they have celebrity friends they talk to celebrity people on the phone they have so many celebrity numbers in their phone you don't hear beyonce saying oh i just talked to one of my many many celebrity friends you don't hear for god's sakes you don't even hear nene lee saying oh well you know i checked my rolodex of celebrity names and i just picked one to go out to lunch with you don't hear these people say that because when you're actually well known when you're actually a public figure when you're actually a celebrity there's almost like a code of conduct that everybody follows you don't discuss this you don't discuss that you don't talk about this you don't brag about this it's it's kind of like an unspoken rule so the fact that you always 
uh, feel the need to name drop. The fact that you always have to qualify your alleged status by saying, oh, one of my many celebrity friends, we all see through the facade. I just wonder when you are going to realize that we see what's not there and what's not there is the celebrity friends. Because I think if you had even five real celebrity friends, and we're talking about people that are like known and respected, who have clout, who have a good steady financial base, the things that you crave so much. I think if you had at least five of those, your attitude and demeanor and the way you approach social media would be a lot different. I, I, I really don't think that you would be the way you are if you had actual real celebrity people. Let's scratch celebrity. Let's say famous. Let's say recognized and respected. Let's say those who hold a firm position or a stake in Hollywood, in the, the record industry, in the, the film or television industry. Because a Natalie Nunn, a Nene Leakes, a Jada Fire, a Donovan, a Tawanda, a Trina Braxton, uh, Angelia Preston, formerly of America's Next Top Model. These are not people that we look up to and hold them on a high pedestal. These are people that we look or like that. So if that's if that's what you're surrounding yourself with and, and if that's what's bolstering your uh, presence as a public figure, baby, throw all that away and go back to the drawing board because it's not happening. Sorry.